Francisco. Just want to say thanks to the embassy, the commission for this opportunity. I'm really excited, excited to be at this university. Oh, um, you're a lawyer. Yes, I started out in journalism, spent five years, <laughs> five years as a newspaper reporter in Utah, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and then I went to law school and uh, done a couple of postgraduate law degrees in the U.K. As Antonio mentioned, um, in 2014, I had the opportunity to come as a specialist at the Universidad Mayor. And since that time, I've developed relationships um, with various universities. I've been as far north as Antofagasta and as far south as Concepcion. But my goal this time is to go further north and further south. And maybe further west, like Easter Island, you know? Ah, <laughs> it, it, it just opened. It just opened. Just opened. Oh, yeah. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, for sure. So I did another Fulbright Specialist Project in Colombia in 2019, and I took this picture. And I think we're all involved in education. I don't know if you can read that, and it's small, but education is the passport to freedom. And uh, it's really uh, a privilege to be involved in this um, experience with young people and kind of formation of their world views and, and values and everything like that. And uh, I take that you know, very seriously, the impact that we have and that other people have on us is great. So it's a great, a great thing that we're involved in, and I'm excited. Um, so uh, just to dive in, specifically, I was very interested when you mentioned media freedom and uh, disinformation as a priority area. So that, that's kind of what I work on. I've represented news media organizations as a lawyer, and most of my academic research is focused on freedom of the press, and especially in international human rights law. Um, and uh, with a real focus on Latin America, I spent two years in Argentina, done projects in Ecuador and Peru, and of course Chile. And so. Um, the U.S. Congressional Research Service has some definitions that I think are really helpful because sometimes we hear these phrases thrown around, you know, and we kind of conflate propaganda with disinformation and misinformation, but Congressional Research says, well, propaganda is government information, so something coming from a government. Now, it could be true, or it could be not true. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not, right? And then disinformation is intentionally false, so somebody's getting something out there, but with the purpose to accomplish something, knowing that they're doing a falsehood. Misinformation, though, is something unintentionally false. So sometimes that happens. We make mistakes. You know, people say things that aren't quite aren't quite in, informed. And in the United States, we have you know the First Amendment, which protects us in saying false stuff as long as we didn't know it was false at the time, right? And and then other countries have various levels of kind of protection for free free expression in that way. Um, then there are three other phrases that I think are, are important to think about. Information literacy, media literacy, and news literacy. And, you know, literacy is kind of a hot button thing. Everybody wants to be literate in everything. You know, cultural literacy is a thing, and, and now we have news literacy. But, but broadly speaking, information literacy is kind of, you know, functioning in the world, like understanding numeracy a little bit. Can I do basic, you know, math or something just to get along in the world and reading, of course, and writing and stuff like that. Media literacy is focused on, you know, media, but that's not necessarily journalism because media includes movies and music and books and lots of stuff out there. Podcast. Yeah, and it's obviously social media, and it's kind of media literacy is kind of focused on critiquing the content, you know, but news literacy or or journalism focus is really about empowering citizens to act or engage in a civic capacity. And civic engagement is not necessarily the same thing as political engagement, right? It doesn't have to be that you're in a political party or you're running a campaign. It might just be that you're involved in your community in some way, contributing on the local school board or, you know, involved in uh, community issues. And so news literacy really aims to help people be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> back in... Uh, 1919, U.S. Supreme Court decided a case that defined, Justice Holmes here wrote an opinion defining the marketplace of ideas as kind of the core, you know, function of the First Amendment, freedom of expression protection. Won't go into that in great detail, but his quote is, um, you know, focused on the idea of the marketplace of ideas is supposed to get us closer to the truth. You know, so we let a lot of ideas compete out there, and some of them are dangerous, and some of them are harmful, and some of them are false, but in the end, the collective wisdom of society is supposed to be able to come up with what is true, right? Now, what we've kind of seen in this current age that we're in is collective wisdom doesn't always work, right? Sometimes the majority of the people get duped or are just into conspiracies or disinformation, you know, overwhelms their ability to kind of sift through everything that's coming at them. And so what I think is important is that we have... Um, uh, 
protections for journalism because it is supposed to be an arbiter of truth. Now, journalism is not perfect, and journalists make mistakes. And some of what's done under the guise of journalism is not really journalism in the independent, truth-seeking manner. You know, it's more like propaganda or disinformation. And so we have to be careful about distinguishing that. But um, anyway, the idea of the freedom of expression, again, is it accomplishes certain things. I won't go into all this, but searching for truth is one of those things that free expression is supposed to help us to be able to do. Um, and uh, so, news literacy education. News literacy education, this is really the focus of what we're working on with the communications faculty at uh, Universidad del Desarrollo. And really, uh, this is kind of based on academic literature and industry literature about news literacy. There are five functions. So first, it's kind of understanding the role of news in society. You know, what is it supposed to do? Um, and sometimes when you hear people throw around the phrase media, you know, it's like, well, the media did this or that. But I think that's too, too broad because, again, media is everything from Hollywood to Mark Zuckerberg, to you know, local person on the street sending a message on WhatsApp, right? So um, the role of news is one slice or one little piece of this larger media uh, landscape. And, and again, the role of news is mostly about empowering citizens, helping them get information that they need in their lives to make decisions. It might be about politics, but it might, so, might also be about products and services to buy, what to you know, stay away from can be obviously entertainment focused at times, sports, media, you know, there's a lot of, of things there. But what we, what we see is there's need number two to help motivate, especially young people, to want to seek out news that's relevant to their life. You know, because we sometimes have apathy. Young people think, okay, they're all just lying or they're all just, you know, trying to make money and I just stay away from the news. It's, too, it's either too boring or it's about too much negative stuff all the time. It drags me down. I don't want to pay attention to that. <coughs> so one of the things is how do we motivate, especially young people, to pay attention to news that is relevant to their life that's useful for them to make decisions. Number three, again, recognizing what is actually news and what's disinformation, what's propaganda, and what's misinformation. but. To, to recognize high value news and information and distinguish it from lower value news and information, right? It's not necessarily a black and white thing where there's good and bad, but there's kind of gradations of value of information. And then finally, <coughs> or, or number four is critically evaluate news. So again, the goal is maybe not just to avoid bias, but maybe to contextualize it. Because on some level, all journalism is going to be biased, but the bias is not necessarily always bad or ill-intentioned or um, devious, right? Sometimes the bias is just, well, I'm a human being and I've had experiences in my life that have impacted how I see the world, and so when I produce some content that goes out on news, that's based on you know my worldview, and so there's a bias there, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm trying to tell somebody, do this or do that, vote for this or vote for that. And then number five is kind of the highest order level of kind of news literacy would be actually helping people to have the ability to create news and understand, you know, a little bit about what, what that is. And so obviously we have journalism students that we're working with to do that, but one of my goals is helping other students, you know, like spend a day in the news in the student newsroom, come down to the studio and see how it's not that easy to take the three-dimensional world that we live in and reduce that into two-dimensional space on a video or in an article and kind of have some empathy and understand some of the challenges that go on there. So that's kind of our, our focus. Um, the methodology that we're working on is really is still in development as to how we do this, but our goal is delivering a news literacy education program for citizens that could be implemented. So I was really interested to hear Kyle talking about American spaces and things that they're doing with similar uh, projects. But, but you know, we have to think about the content, obviously. Um, the, the laws and regulations governing, governing expression the news consumer, and then the journalist who's producing. And so, you know, there are various, I think, ways to kind of get, get at um, the methodology that we're going to design that will hopefully give us something useful that people could, um, could benefit from in terms of their own news consumption. So thanks for listening. Um, any comments or questions? Love to hear any ideas you all have. Great.